All right. Here's another lesson for the tap folk or anybody else on YouTube that found this video. Um, so I think the last lesson we did was this where we brought in the third person character and then we have him grabbing stuff. Let me see, I think I'm hitting the G key. Plus we have the AI following us around. So now we're grabbing this teapot and letting it go and it falls. And that's fun. But I think the thing that everybody really wants, hopefully, is to be able to make their own character and um, run that character around the screen. And that that's what we're going to do. So we are going to open Maya. And I already have it open here. Already has a character in it, but I'm going to have to save this. And start fresh. So I'm going to start with a new scene. So this is how my Maya shows up. Um, maybe let's fix some of these things. OK. I like having the channel box on the right. Uh, I don't think I'll try. I'll try to really quickly go over the um, the Maya interface. So what I have here is on on the in the upper right. There's this thing that says workspace, and I think I chose Maya Classic. Um, honestly, I don't know what what happens when you click all these other things, but this is what I'm used to. So I'll teach it to you this way, and then um, hopefully you guys can follow along. Over here on the left side, I have the outliner, which you might not see. Actually, I think the default view looks more like this without the outliner. So we'll start that way. Um, and if you want the outliner to show up, there's this. Uh, I guess it's the low, the lowest icon on the left side. Um, but what it shows, and it's very similar to the hierarchy, yeah, the scene hierarchy in Unity, where it basically shows you what's in the scene. And what it has is it has four cameras for a perspective camera, which is sort of the bird's eye view camera. And what I'm doing here, um, orbiting around the scene in this window on the upper right, is um, holding down the Alt key, and then I'm clicking. But you have all um, the four cameras. So there's top, front, side. These cameras are hidden in the scene, so you'll never see the camera icon. But you could make them visible if you want. And then there's these sets, which uh, I don't currently use very much. Let's talk about building our character. Um, Here's what I think we should do. I think we should start with the skeleton. Um, I don't normally do it that way, but today that's what I'm going to do because it will help us guide us to build the geometry around the skeletal shape. And this might not apply to your character, but I think it'll just be a clear way to show the workflow. And then I think I'll do another video where we build a more customized character and then sort of fit the skeleton to it. And uh, so here, here, here's, a, here's what we'll do. We want to bring up a skeleton. And I think when you open up Maya for the first time, you should have these tabs up here. And um, hopefully you have them. And you would want to go to the rigging tab and go to Quick Rig. And I'm just going to click that button once. And what it does is it brings up the Quick Rig window. Interesting. For some reason, I thought it was going to create something, but it didn't. So I usually just close this window, because to be completely honest, 
I don't really know what it does. Not yet, anyway. But I'll learn it one of these days and probably end up teaching it to you guys. Um, I've been using Maya so long that they keep adding these new features that I, I never really had a chance to learn about. But we're just getting into the basics. So what I want to do is to create a skeleton. So after we clicked Quick Rig, which I might have been a little unnecessary since I wanted, I end up closing that window and just looking over here to the right. But this should have popped up. And this is the human IK window, I guess. And I'm just now realizing that. So maybe we could have gone here to this thing, got clicked on rigging. Now, this thing kind of goes into different modes of Maya. Um, and it, by when we change it from modeling to rigging, it changes the menu items that are available to us. And I believe we would have wanted to go to the skeleton uh, menu and gone to human IK down here. It would have brought up, brought up this window. So I'm learning. And that's the right way to do it, I think. I'm going to click Create Skeleton. And I guess just click it once, because I think every time you click it, uh, actually it disappears. So you can't really click it more than once, so that's nice. And right now we see these funny looking triangular things with well, some round things. Um, so what I'm doing here is, OK, here's something I'm going to do in Maya that um, you're going to see a lot. When my mouse is hovering over this um, upper right hand window, which is the perspective window. Um, by the way, I, I, I don't know if I went over this. Uh, you can change your layout over here on the left here. So to get to the layout that I'm using, it's this button right here. And now I'm over in the perspective window. And now if I have my mouse kind of hovering there and I just kind of slap the space bar, it just kind of jumps into that view. And um, it's a lot easier to work this way. And now I'm just using the scroll wheel here to zoom in and out. So it's, some of these things are similar to Unity. Hopefully you're accustomed to Unity now. And um, for my personal preference, I like to work within the, the grid, the, the size of the grid that's down here. So I'll, I will select this thing that appeared in the outliner. So this is actually our skeleton. And it's called character1 underscore reference. I'm just selecting that thing. And I'm going to hit R to get the scale manipulator. And I'm going to scale it down by left click dragging on the middle square, which is the universal scale. Or I can, I think, middle mouse drag from anywhere within this pane. So I'll click the middle mouse and drag it. Um, so that feels like the right scale to me. If I click on this uh, thing all the way on the right here at the top there, that's the channel box. I like this view. I can see that I scaled it by 0 0.019. So that's two one hundredths about 0 0.02, I'll say. So I'm just going to, I just left clicked and dragged here like this. Just because I'm sort of anal retentive, I'm going to make it 0 0.02. So now if I alt left click and orbit around, kind of looking at the skeleton. Um, and now I'm using this. So yeah, this is habitual. So holding Alt, and I use the left mouse, the middle mouse just click and drag, and then middle mouse scroll like that. So I'm constantly doing this. So middle, uh, left, so with while the Alt key is down, I'm left clicking, I'm middle mousing, and I'm right clicking. 
Actually, I think I prefer that to using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. But I bet I use both alternating without even realizing it. Um, here's a funny thing. I don't really like the dimensions of this character. Um, so let's slap that spacebar so we get back to the quad view. And I want to see the front view, so I'm going to slap the spacebar when my mouse is in there. And um, I'll use a scroll wheel this time. So I just, I don't know, I feel like the, uh, I feel like these legs can come out a little bit. So what I'll do is drag them out. And I guess I'm just eyeballing it now. I guess we'll get into really detailed stuff later on. I don't know why. To me, I think the neck joint looks too low, so I'm going to raise it up. Uh, you guys don't have to do this, but it's, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to stop messing with it. As a matter of fact, well, all right, I'll just mess with it a little more. <laughs> Drag the... What is wrong with me? Okay, so there's my skeleton, and I'm gonna slap the space bar again and put it in the perspective view. And uh, I, I know it looks weird, so let's let's just jump right in and start building something. So I'm gonna um, space bar again. Whoops, how come it's frozen? Okay, let's go to the front view again. So here's what I'll do. I'm gonna switch over to modeling mode. So I'm clicking up in this thing, and I'm going to look for the create, and I'm going to use polygon primitives cube. So it's similar to what we do in Unity when we want a cube, where you go to the create menu. And so right off the bat, I feel like that head's too big, so I'm going to R, scale it down, and um, think of this as where the neck is going to rotate. So, and I'll hit W, drag the head down a little bit. So we'll have the neck joint slightly below the, where the head is. And um, we should, since we've made this cube, we should go over to this window on the right while the cube is selected and increase our subdivisions to, I think, two, how about three, three, three. And you can see it update here on, in, in the scene. It just gives us a little bit more geometry to, well, in this case, we're going to probably, we're going to want more geometry to make it deform better. And the, the one more thing I want to do is go to, while this thing's still selected, go up to, where is it? I think mesh smooth. And I'll select that. And it has options, but I like the way it looks by default. What it did was it kind of smoothed out. It added more lines, more points, more lines, more geometry, basically, and um, made it a slightly smoother looking cube. So now if I click out here in the window just to deselect it, if I slap the space bar and slap it again in the uh, perspective window, hold down Alt, drag around, we see that we have a head. I mean, it's a square-looking head, but we're, we're in a rush. We want to make a blocky character. So what I'll do is, that's our head. I'm going to Control-D to duplicate. It's just like how we would do it in Unity. And I'm going to hit W to get into the move manipulator. And I'm going to drag down the, the y-axis, which is the yellow arrow. And I guess that's going to be our chest. So I'm going to run through this kind of fast, because I feel like I'm going a little slow. So if this is our chest, maybe it needs to be taller. I'm going to hit W, bring it down. Hit R, drag this thing, bring it up. It's quite a boxy chest. Maybe W, scale it up a little. 
And maybe I want the bottom to be tapered a little. Um, how about we'll wait? We'll, we'll get to that. But I guess the shoulders are kind of lined up okay. If you hit four, it goes to wireframe, and five goes back to shading. So this is how you kind of toggle through the views. And the reason I hit four to go to wireframe, I just wanted to see where the joints line up. So that's what I mean by the joint is the ball end of, of each, each of these things. So what I'll do quickly, but you don't necessarily have to do, while I have one of these joints selected. So any, if you select anywhere on one of these joints, and by that I mean the ball, the, this ball end is attached to like the, this sort of triangular prism shape. That whole thing is a joint. Or actually, I guess it's a bone, or both. Um, but it represents that there's a joint where it actually rotates from the pivot point. And then there's the length of it kind of represents that if you have a chain of bones, that you'll have another bone that if you move that bone, it, it affects how this bone um, is kind of a con continuously attached to it. So moving this bone up makes this bone kind of change shape. So we're actually stretching it out, and that's that's probably not a good thing. So I'm going to hit Z to undo. I think Control Z works also, since we're probably accustomed to that. And also, if I use the E manipulator, which is rotate, now you can also rotate the joint. And you'll see that if you rotate the elbow joint, all the bones in the hand follow it. That's something which you guys probably know, which is called forward kinematics. Um, but you don't have to know that right now. So I'm going to undo that, hit Control Z, or just Z. OK, getting back to modeling. I'm going to select the, now P, it's called P cube 2, but I'm going to refer to it as the chest. I, I could rename it, but I'm not going to. So Control D on that, and I'm going to hit W to get back to the Move tool. I'm going to move, use these arrows, the Move Manipulator arrows. Kind of rotate around. And now I'm going to go faster, just because I don't want this video to be four hours long. So I'm just kind of approximating what I think a Maybe I, th I guess that's called the bicep of, uh, of the arm. I think maybe it's too wide there. So it's a blocky bicep. And I'll leave gaps where the joints are, maybe. Yeah, not overlap too much. Why don't I hit 5, go back to shaded mode. And now I'm selecting that bicep and Control D, drag it over. And that's our forearm. I'll hit R. Maybe bring down the shape a little bit. And we're going to be really simple with the hand. I'm going to Control D, W, bring the manipulator over, R, scale it like that, W, drag it over. And I'm just going to go for like a flat hand, I guess. So that's our hand. So let's uh, maybe I'll hit R. So in the scale manipulator, flatten out the hand. I'd like to have a thumb, but not today. <laughs> um, so there's our arm. And I guess we need a pelvis. So I'll co select the chest, Control D, hit W, bring it down, hit R. Start scaling these things. I guess that's a pelvis. Hit W. Maybe look at it from the side. Maybe I want it to be tapered a little. It's a skinny robot. Control D, W, bring it down, bring it over. And um, I guess I'll just kind of do this. Call that a quadricep or a thigh. 
Maybe I want this up higher. Select this. Oh, and while you're doing this, you might accidentally select the skeleton. That might be a, that might cause problems. Um, but we'll do our best, right? We'll just do our best. So that's because because let's rush through this. Yeah, let's just finish this up. Okay. Because basically it's all the same. Control D. We're hitting W, E, or R to get our manipulators um, cruising around. And taper this a little bit. Bring it up. I'd like a need like a ball joint there. That would be better. But maybe maybe later. Yeah. Let's do it another time. So we need a foot. So and I'm doing one side, and I'll just show you how I'm going to mirror it over later. So I'll Control D, bring it down, kind of do this and this, and maybe pull it forward a little. Oops, I didn't mean to hit the space bar, so I'm going to do that again. Um, okay. Maybe go to the front view so that I can flatten the foot. Maybe it could be wider so it has some more stability. And uh, there's half our guy. OK, so this is what I should have told you. Because I want to select things like this, right? But when I do that, for some reason, it's selecting the skeleton. I really should have gone over this. <laughs> Um, this is our skeleton in the outliner. So if you don't have the outliner up, it's this button. It's called character reference. Now, there's two things we could do. Up in here, um, I believe it is this select joint thing. If I deselect that, now it won't ever select the joints. That's useful. But maybe I'll just show you this one other thing. Although I'm thinking in my, right now my, my brain is saying that's going to complicate things. But what can you do? Everything we're doing is complicated. So there's this thing in the channel. So when you have the channel window, or so over here, what do they call it? The channel box. So if I select this, if I click this, for some reason, it turns off the channel box, but now it's showing you this other thing, which is the modeling toolkit. Um, I thought that the whole box would just disappear, but instead it decided to show us modeling toolkit. So it seems like every time you toggle something off, something else takes its place. But I just want to show you that there is the channel box, and to get it, you want to click this thing over here. I like the channel box. It lets you change all the Translates, rotates, scales, let you see some of the stuff down here that we could get into more detail another time. But then down at the bottom, there's this thing that says display. And that's kind of important because what we could do is we can create a, a display layer. And so I clicked on that thing there and it created a layer, it called it layer one. And what I could do is, while character one reference is selected, I can right click on layer one and add selected objects. Now, it's in a display layer, so I could turn this where it says V. That's the visibility. I can turn it off, and now the, the skeleton has disappeared. Or I could have visibility on, and this box that has nothing in it over here, the third one over, if I click that, it goes to T, which um, stands for template, I think. And what that means is you can still see it, but it's not, it's not selectable in the uh, view. So that's what I, I want. But um, it's probably better that we just went with the stuff up here. Well, now you have two ways to uh, control, control your stuff, because maybe you want to hide it because it gets in the way. I'm going to leave it on. 
and templating. Whew, that's a lot of talking for one little feature. Getting back to modeling. So now I can sort of select things a little more freely now that the skeleton is not in our way. So I want to select these guys. So without touching any keys, I'm just clicking and dragging like this, selecting the forearm, the bicep, and the hand. But I want to also select the leg parts, so I'm going to hit Shift, and I'm just going to select them one by one. Click, click, click. Oh, that's left click. And what I'm going to do is hit Control G, G as in group, Control G. And it, over here in the outliner, you'll see it. You'll see all those pieces kind of collapse into this thing, which you can now open up and you can see that they're in there. So while the group is selected, I'm going to Control D, and it duplicated it. And over in the channel box, I'm going to scale the X scale by negative 1. And now I have the two sides. And there is our finished beautiful model. So I'm going to might as well save it. Save scene. And uh, this it brought me to a weird spot. So I'm going to have to navigate over to my project somehow. This is going to be different for everyone. Um, you're going to have to maybe find a, a place on your hard drive where you want to save your, your Maya scenes. Right now I'm going to put them in my C drive under Documents, Maya Projects, Default Scenes. And for you guys it will probably be on the D drive. Maybe I can do that. So what I did was I went up to this triangle all the way, dragged it all the way down to my computer, but I guess I could have just clicked it here. Okay, so we got my computer. Let's double click on D drive. And here's what I'll do. I'm going to right click here because I want a new folder. I'm going to call it my uh, scenes. And I double clicked on that, and then I'll name it. I'll name it um, Boxy Character. No, that's too generic. Boxy, Boxy Man, Boxy Humanoid, Box, whatever. Okay. Saved it. And since I'm using the student version, um, I'm, I'm not sure if you, you're all using the same thing. It always has to pop up this annoying message, so just hit continue and it saves it. I also have another version called LT, but I don't think we're using that for class. Need some coffee? Okay. So we have our boxy thing. It's the Maya file is saved. It's basically roughly in the shape of the skeleton. We grouped our parts and we duplicated it to the other side. So here's where things get everything is technical, but yeah, it's gonna get technical again. I'm just going to select all of it and I'm going to go to modify freeze transforms. I'm also going to go, I want to ungroup these now. Not really sure that's necessary, but I'm going to do it because that's how I work. Now, if I get an error, there's ways around it because I got an error when I tried this earlier today. But let's see, I'm going to, with the group selected, I'm going to edit and ungroup. Well, I didn't get an error. But what I could have done, since the transforms are frozen, actually, I don't know if that matters. I suppose I could have just selected them and shift select them. And then, OK, this is um, a very weird, specific, Maya specific thing. I want to select these things here in the outliner. So I'm clicking one, I'm holding shift, and I'm clicking the last one. And I want to drag them up out of this thing. 
But normally, in most programs, you can just left mouse click and drag it. But if you try that in Maya, it deselects them. So I'm going to left click, select one, hold down shift, select the last one, and then middle mouse drag it up to there. And that's one way to ungroup it. Only if you have an error, like if you see an error, error message. I don't know why I was getting an error earlier today. Some something about leaf something. And I'm gonna select that group that's empty, and I'm gonna hit backspace to delete it. So now, in our outliner, we should see all of our parts. Which, if we were taking this more seriously, we would have named them the name of each part, like. I'll double click this one and call it head. And um, I'll double click this, call it chest. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to fast forward past this. Uh, or, I mean, I'm just going to ignore that for now. So we have a skeleton, we have our body parts. And they're not associated with each other in any way. So if I go back to my channel box because I um, templated out my skeleton, I'm, I'm going to want to undo that. So over here where it says T, I'm going to click it to R and then click it again so that it's nothing. That R thing would also have made it difficult to select. So I believe that's a render, some kind of render thing. <laughs> um, sorry, I don't actually... I don't know it well enough to be able to describe it properly. Uh, doesn't matter though. Um, not at this point. So here's where we're gonna um, get to the good stuff. Because basically, I'm gonna hit four so that you could see the skeleton and the uh, geometry wireframe. Uh, one more thing I could show you, hit 5 again, what if I hit 6, yeah, let's hit 5. But then the, if we go to these little um, menu items or menus above the perspective pane, every pane will have its own thing. You can actually go to x-ray joints and it actually shows you the joints through the shaded model. Okay. Maya has a million little tools. It's just insane. So what I wanted to show you was that when I select a joint, and if I hit E, because I want to rotate that joint, you'll see that it doesn't affect the geometry. So I'm going to have to hit Z to undo that. Now I want them to be connected somehow. So to do that, let's check my notes. We're going to select all of the geometry. Now can I just drag it? No. See, this is what happens. It, it selects all the joints. Um, I'll do it from the outliner, like this, to select the geometry. And then, while I'm holding Shift, I'll click on a joint. So now we had all the geometry, and now we have a joint selected. And then if we are in the rigging section of this thing, under skin, you're going to bind skin. And it's going to think for a bit, and then boom. Except that it didn't do what I wanted. Oh, shoot, it did. OK. But the color coding is weird. I, I guess I thought I thought the color coding would apply to this stuff down here too, but it's not. No. That's really weird. So I'm going to undo it to see if there's a way to... Maybe I didn't do it quite correctly. So I think if I undo it one more time. Yeah, undo is really sketchy in Maya, so I'm just doing it um, to sort of show you. <laughs> well, to be 
probably the most correct. I think I need to select this joint, which is the center of the entire, kind of like, it's the parent most joint. It's the hips. So the entire skeleton is, um, starts with the hips, I suppose. So if I went through here again, select head, shift, select the bottom thing, and then hold, holding shift, I'll select the hip joint. Then I'll go to skin and bind skin. And then if I click over here on the, out here to deselect, it looks like I got good color coding. Don't know why I didn't have that before. Maybe I need to go Google that and try to figure out the right way to do this. But um, if we select a joint and rotate it, it looks like it's working. Now, those of you that have more experience with rigging will say that we need to edit the weights because when I rotate the shoulder, I don't really want the whole chest to get collapsed in like that. Um, that's a little bit more of an advanced topic, and one that I'm not fully prepared to teach. But I'm just showing you now that these joints work. You can test your joints, um, but just remember to undo what you did. Like if I if I rotate this, just hit undo so that it goes back to the generic pose. So we're going to go to File, and we're going to save our scene, and we're going to close, hit Continue here. Now our guy is saved, so now we want to get it into Unity. Whew. Take another swig of coffee. That is a lot of talking. And um, this should be easy. We're just going to select all of our geometry. We're going to select character reference, hold down shift, select the whole thing. But since our whole scene is basically our character and rig, we could probably export the whole scene. So if we go to File, uh, I'm going to go to Export Selection. Now, this I'm showing you this because it's something I talked about before, it's very similar to the workflow from 3ds Max. So it, it automatically brought me to my Maya scenes. That's OK. I'll just keep it there. My mouse keeps moving by itself. Hold on. So under file name, I'm going to call it uh, Foxyman Export Selection, just so that I know sort of the tool that I'm using as an example. But where it says files of type, I want that to be FBX. So we'll go to FBX export. And I suppose we're going to just use the, the default settings. Or let's try something. Now, this is tr something experimental, I suppose. I'm going to. Scroll down to units and unclick automatic so that it says centimeters because that's what I want. I don't know if this will make a difference, but I just want to try it. So I'm going to hit export selection. All right. Now we go to, we'll go to, whoops, I'm clicking and dragging things down here at the bottom. Let's go to, my D drive, here's my D drive, our Maya scenes, and we have our new FBX file is right here. But we also want to see my Unity window. So let's go get that Maya scenes thing um, from the file explorer. And somewhere, I guess I'll just drag it into assets in Unity. So 
over here in my file explorer click and drag that down to assets so that you see the whole assets things uh, light up and um, so if I click on assets in unity there's our new boxy man and what if I want to just drag that into our scene Boom. now it seems to be invisible so I'm going to select this boxy man thing from here and go up to model in my inspector and unclick use file scale so this is where my thing where I went to centimeters I thought it was going to fix this but it didn't so we so usually my quick fix is to unclick use file scale in the in these are the import settings in case you're wondering so hit apply and now we see our boxy guy um, use shading looks kind of weird Ooh. so some of our geometry is like inverted not too happy about that I'm going to go back to Maya let's see if I can figure out why Well, the scales are still set to negative one. Okay. So this is less than ideal. Uh, rather than fix it, I'm going to finish this tutorial. So we'll go back to Unity and select our new guy in our scene. And uh, I'm going to scale him to roughly the size of Ethan. I mean, I we all know these tools by now. I'm going to bring him over. I'm going to hit F to frame up. I just want him to be the same size as Ethan. And now we're, we're going to go through all these steps. First thing, in no particular order, since we have this new guy selected, I see that he doesn't have a animator controller, so I'm going to click on this little round thing. I'm going to make it the third person animator controller because I know that that's the same one that's on Ethan. So we could do this. We could select Ethan and see what he has, select our guy, see what our guy has, and kind of make these comparisons. Now, I know he needs a rigid body and a capsule collider. But I'm going to jump down to this third person user control script. So I'll go to our boxy guy, add component, and start typing third person. And we'll go user control. Now, I knew that it was going to create a capsule and a ridge body. That's why I chose that one. And it looks like it also brought in third person character script. So that's extremely convenient. So we got four things for the price of one and it looks like we could also add the box collider that's a trigger and the player grab thing but let's leave that off for here for now now I want to hit play and see if I did anything all right now it's funny it kind of sort of it works in that he rotates but, boy, that's really zoomed out. So I'm going to select my camera and kind of move it around so you can see a little better. OK. Now I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to copy this component. Because if I go out of play mode, now the camera is going to change. You can see it here. So I'm going to go paste component values so that I could get the camera where I wanted it to be. So if I hit play again, it's just a little bit closer. OK, our guy is stuck in T-Pose. So I'm going to actually go to Assets, find our boxy guy from, from here, 
So it's different when you select it in the project window because that means you can affect its import settings. So we're going to select Foxyman export selection. Go to rig, change it from the animation type from generic to humanoid and hit apply. Except it found an error for some reason. Open import messages folder below for more details. Right foot not found. Hmm. So I'll go to configure. Sure, I'll save it. Yeah, it just can't find the right foot. Boy, this is really disappointing. So what if I select just can't find it. So here's right foot. That is so funny. This is so strange. You shouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to take the right foot from here and drag it into here. And uh, I'm going to take right toe base and drag it into here. You should not have to do this. So something went wrong, but I'm just going to fix it now. This is a, an amazing learning opportunity, but it's also kind of maddening. Okay, so our guy jumps. We're going to select it again, and um, one thing I see between Ethan and our boxy guy, the capsule is in a weird position, so I'm going to go to center here in the capsule collider I'm going to bring it up and you'll see that sort of sphere thing go up I'll go about middle and then I'll go to height and I'll drag that thing so that it basically reaches the, like the whole sort of core of the character is sort of covered but I also want it to come down low enough to kind of meet the ground and then let's see what happens if I hit play. Okay. There. So this is how you know I'm not insane. That it is possible to make a, a customized character that follows all the same animations as the third person rig. It is a complicated process. There's a lot of caveats. Look, if I hit jump, he jumps really high. Um, that's because it's using the default settings in the controller uh, scripts. If you want, you can unclick the play mode, and you can actually compare the settings between these two. Now, since they're basically the same dimensions, I'm going to select Ethan and go to this third-person character script and go to the right and do a copy component and then select my boxy guy, go to the same script and from the same kind of gear icon do a uh, paste component values. So now we basically copied over the same jump power, some of these speed settings. Now I'm going to hit play. Now they're like they're like buddies, oh, except that that guy got hit on the head, so he he ducked. Yeah, it's working really well now, but all sorts of weird things happened. You know, he's like he has one dark reversed arm, one dark leg. So my um, my scaled reversed uh, what is that the right arm right leg is um, has some issues and uh, I could show you how to fix that another time. Wow. Showing you this makes me realize how complicated this is. <laughs> but 
just to say that it is possible, it's not, it's not um, that it didn't require animating your own character, having tons of custom animations. You didn't have to write a script to make the guy run and jump. So in a sense, we took a process that might take weeks or, well, let's just say weeks. A whole process that of building a character, rigging it, and um, importing it into Unity, oh, animating all the the you know run all of the different walk and run cycles, and jump animation. We didn't have to do that stuff. We did it all in like however long this took an hour, I guess. And um, that's not too bad, but I think I can do better. So I need to streamline this process. Looks like my guy got stuck, so Ethan's coming to save him. All right. I think that's enough for today. And um, I got to work on the process, I guess. But uh, I don't mind making these mistakes in front of you because... You know, it, it's it's also part of the, the learning process I'm trying to, to teach. Um, but I think I've rambled on too long already. So uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.